morning, good afternoon, good night. Here, me and Sam are in the shop with his the champagne AU, basically the brother the brother AU of the drift car is this rig. Uh, that's been well you guys seen it on the dyno uh, I mean a few months ago. Obviously had the clutch slippage problem, so I've given him another clutch. It's a bit dark though. Eh? I've given him another clutch and Basically, now the clutch should be enough to explode the gearbox immediately. Um, because the clutch I've given him killed two of my gearboxes, so it should be sweet, clutch-wise. Um, he's also changed the turbo, so he's gone to the same size as mine. 3076 Garrett Turbski. Um, it hasn't gone to Benny's yet, but we're going to try and run it up, try and find a couple little couple little issues just to make sure she's good so he's brought into the shop so we can just make sure that it's going to be all right for the dyno nothing silly like exhaust falling off or tail shaft bolts coming out or tail shaft snapping all those types of things so it's in and we're also going to have a look at the the drift car because i have got some x's blue boy and uh i just want to do a comp test so we're going to do a compression test because my catch cam, which is that which drains back to the sump, has uh, I've had to do an extra catch can to catch can to catch my catch cans, um, which that happened obviously at Matsuri. So I did forget the oil cap at Matsuri, it's on, that's good, but we need to suss that out. So I'm gonna just check the compression. I've got a feeling that a couple of the rings have kissed each other, they weren't as keen on limiter as I am. So we're gonna have a look at that. Also, we're gonna go a bit of a trip down. So I was doing it, I was talking to someone the other day and I was like, like, oh, how long have you been drifting? I'm like, look, definitely a long time. Um, and I found out my first trophy or some sort of win podium thing was in 2011. So we're gonna do a rundown of that. Um, just what I did, what I've what I've achieved, I guess, in terms of competition, how long I've been driving, because a lot of people think I've only just recently started but I'm definitely getting older and I've been driving for a while. So, uh, also did not start in AUs either. So, um, I just realized I was checking one of the trophies and I wasn't sure why I had that place. And then I went through my memories and then I remembered that I basically ruined the car and that's why I got that spot. So that was great. Oosh. Took it for a quick, uh, quick little blood around just to see. So obviously it's not fully tuned, so it's not going to run 100% right. But it just damn looked hot. This car's been parked for so long; it's got the the old stickers. It's kind of weird. We're going to get Sam to go for a quick lift for his car bike. The dose is so hot. Give it a rev. Gotta give it a look. I think he's managed, but I think it's hitting some sort of gap. Maybe fuel cut. <laughs> All right, so we've got the mighty compression tester. Basically, it's the heartbreaker. So having a look at the spark plugs, I don't see too much issue. So I had a quick, they all, I don't know how well you guys can pick that up, but um, nothing really obvious. So obviously the um, that thing is pretty full of oil, so I'm definitely getting something, but we're gonna just chuck this bad boy on, give it a crank, see what we got. So, gauge's obviously gonna be upside down, but. I think I found the problem. It seems like number one because of where it's at. 
and we've only got about 130. That's not good for a soccer engine. So I think number one, but look, it could even be, it could even be a valve that we've got dirt on. It could even be that. So I'll do the other one. All right, number two, here we go. Number one was not great. Oh God. Look, it's definitely not better. <laughs> right, it is even though, like we're... It's like they're all consistent. <laughs> it's all consistently pretty bad. So we're, it's about the same, okay. So maybe, that's maybe. Number two was about 140 as well. Number three. We're hearing it, an extra noise there. Uh, however, that one is going more. That's that that's that's still not great. Though that's about 165. There's an extra noise. Like number four. Also has a random noise. Probably the bottom end leaving, but anyway. Oop. So this one's so three and four about the same, so about 165. So number five is there was no noise, which is nice. It was that about about 160. So five PSI less than three and four. Very strange. Okay, number six, lucky last. Let's see how we go. No weird noises, but definitely compression sounds far less. 130 as well. I think probably safe to say this engine's not ideal. And I think this kind of debunks the theory of just running because she still goes. My main thing is the oil consumption is pretty, so the, the oil spillage not consumption because it doesn't burn any oil so so I'm a little bit like where is this going but um I could potentially have the blow by because I've maybe squashed a bearing um maybe cracked a ring lamp but like I said it's not burning any oil there's nothing on the spark plugs in terms of burning so and there is a noise in three and four that is a bit strange it only happens when that's in there and like look I can't hear any knocking so I'm just gonna gonna rev it anyway so I'm just saying to Sam I've never been more confused from a compression test in my life so we've got number one about 135 140 number two 140 number three and four it's like about 165 but it has a knock number five I think had a knock as well but a little bit less about 160 and then number six was back to like 135, 140, no knock. So knock increases the power? It doesn't burn oil. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, I don't have enough knock in one. Oh. So Cam, can we get a bottle of knock? We need a bottle of knock. Yeah, so this is the weirdest one. The spark plugs are clean. It has chronic blow by, which obviously I know. Like if you've the um, if the oh my gosh, the bearing is squashed a bit, it's going to change the compression. Like it only works within you know very small tolerances, um, but it can cause that obviously because you lose efficiency. But I've never been so confused. So I don't even know where to go from here. In this car, that's original. I've got to keep the bottom end. So Sam wants to so his car. It's copped a lot of thrashing actually. Now that we've that can I don't know what to do with that thing, so we're back on we're back on tandem here. It's turbo, it's it's making okay power. Once it gets the final tune, yeah, his original motor is sweet. But he's got a Tickford head that he wants to put onto this one because him and this block go way back. Not really five years. Five years? Yeah, yeah damn. 
And actually, Sam was probably one of the, out of everyone. Obviously, I, I was one of the first to get, well, I was basically you the first were. to get the AU. <laughs> so, one other person did get an AU for a beat at the same time, but we'll not mention them because they're a trash human being. And, um, Sam was like the next person to actually just go, you know, I'm going to go all out. And amongst a bunch of other mates who now are finally building cars, back then were like, why would you waste your money on the AU? Well, he now has one pretty much. It's almost the same as the white one. So basically the gold one and the white one, soon to be not white, are basically the same car. So everything Sam's done is basically just going off what I've done, um, which our main chase was 400 horse. And that's 400 horses because that's just, it guarantees third gear, fourth gear pumpies at the track. Power, if it had 200 horsepower and it did that, it does not matter. We don't even care about horsepower. If it's low horsepower, it's just fun. Yeah, I mean, low horsepower is fun. But um, he still has this. So it's that's an E Series T. <laughs> that is not <laughs> fun. So I've given him my clutch, like I said. So it's pretty much going to explode very shortly. Um, yeah, and then we have to do a diff ratio. So we did have 411s in it. When I first got... He's actually blown a couple diffs. I've blown multiple. I shot the weld out of the first one. Mm. So, and the 411s explode. I can't remember why, but they were in two car. This was the second car it was in. I, don't, I can't remember what happened, but you shot a tooth off the... I shot three teeth off the pinion and then didn't... I just had yeah. diff vibration for two weeks. And then I was like, I should probably just That's have a right, yeah. So he's literally driving around... He shot two teeth off, three. off the off the crown or the pinion? Off the pinion. Off the pinion. So it's, like, it's a weird noise, but anyway, we'll get around to it. Then we pull it out. I'm like, yeah, she's broken, but it was didn't skip. On acceleration, it was fine. It was D cell. It was just ah, violent. So we just got to keep your foot flat. Yeah, pretty well. It was fine. Oh, well, so there's no problem. I didn't say problem. Well, that's true. It was just was broken. That's true. Anyway, so the gold car is. We'll be there, um, and a white car. I'm deeply confused. <laughs> <laughs> the main problem I'm confused is because I've um, I was talking to Benny at Precise Engine Rebuilders who's going to be doing me an engine but with the amount of parts shortages that we have in this country or around the world realistically is we can't actually get like pistons and rods off the oh, shelf so it. there is just major stock problems oh, so yeah. i got to try and find <laughs> through some other people hopefully they can help us out and get something oh, happening because Everyone's getting upset that I'm blowing VCT motors, but I've worked it out. I'm not actually blowing VCT motors. I'm actually... The VCT motor is the same block as the normal one. So it's just the heads. So realistically, I haven't broken any VCT motors. I've just blown a bunch of blocks. So make everyone feel much better, and myself, it's fine. It's all good. Still going to leave some engines for us, but... Yeah, no, you... No. Nah. They're all mine. So I really don't get this. So here, I've been just running for about 45 seconds. Now, literally, we're in here. There is just nothing like that. There's a bit of a VCT rattle. been so confused on what's going on so obviously the compression's down that is that's quite low i honestly don't like i'm expecting far more oil to be coming out the back of this exhaust it's really nothing like it's not even on heat so it's literally burning no oil obviously you could see there a bit of blow by that's oh she's a bit stinky yeah I don't know if you can see that. I kind of just wish that it was just like there was a big rod knock so then we knew. And it's like we did we have to pull it out. But like this, it's at a point where it's not right, but it still works. I don't know how long it will work for, which kind of sucks. Because I'd really like to take it a couple archy days really give it a good beating to work out how to drive it um, also Luke Pink to drive it a couple other boys give them a go in it 
and I really want to give him something that I'm like super confident in and it's at this weird thing where I'm not I'm not confident <laughs> I don't know what the heck like I'm happy to take it myself and give it some thrashing but I'm like not really you know what I mean I'm not fully happy to give it to someone but yeah it should be sweet and it's a it's weird point so I don't know with the drift car it's broken but it's not I don't even know so I'm gonna get on to find out a bit of stuff what I have accomplished in the previous years in the other car I mean the AU's only given us one trophy just one and, and when it was not turbo so we'll go down memory lane I don't know what's wrong in the car so I figured I'll just give it a limit of bash and maybe that'll tell us something the problem see normally we would have a junk tune in the car and the motor would blow but now we've got a junk motor with a good tune and it's still not blowing up maybe I need to tinker with it <laughs> sorry Benny no, I, will not. I will not touch the tune yeah I'm actually so confused I don't know about the neighbors but he's the fine guys he's the fine all right, so here, here are trophies. So I do have a few because I've done quite a lot of driving and I have driven a lot longer than probably most people know. So I've been competing since, I think, 2010. 2011 was my first trophy. So I got a second place at Queensland Raceway in 2011. I was battling Levi Clark, who drives the Exidy S15. Many of you guys might know. So me and him actually started many years back together at the same time. So that's who I was driving with very early on. Then the following year, I won big extreme entry comp. That bad boy at Stanthorpe at Carnell Raceway, gangster track. Um, hopefully if, if whoever's watching and is maybe in that area, maybe the power to council there, help us get that track back because that was a good, really good course. Um, moving on to the next year, 2013, I got a third place at again, Stanthorpe. I love that track. I actually had, it was quite a good event. It was, um, I'm pretty sure that same event actually, I had very major tow car problems. Literally had a fire in a boot of a car. Uh, obviously my tow car broke down. Not even, I didn't even get near QR. My ear let me down again. Then I used a mate's Crusader, then the boot caught fire. Then we got pulled over, the exhaust fell off, and then another mate of mine, Josh Young, many of you know he's an OG driver in the drift scene. He actually passed me and was like, hey, do you need a hand? So that, that happened there, so that's how I remember that one. This same year, pulled this bad boy out of something. I was battling uh, Nick Colson, many of you guys might know. Um, he was driving the Commodore Ute back in the day with like the Australian flag on it. So. I battled him actually and beat him for that. Um, at the same time, I had like $150 RB2530 in my Laurel. Um, somehow pulled that off. Um, so it was a crazy time. Then I had a basically 2014, I had a gap year. I just did some Matsuri's, um, sold my S13, and, and then basically bought a Fiat and then started driving that because I was over RB20 problems. So then moving on to 2015. Um, that big thing back there was basically with this. So I won that round. I actually, that was that was a crazy event. I actually won a Blue Nicks gearbox. So the battle for first and second at Rally Raceway. So the, these were all Rally. That was for the championship. I blew the gearbox literally down the hill entering in the wet. Gearbox blew. I had no more gear. I was literally entering down the hill and I'm like, how am I even gonna do the last term? Like I have no gearbox. And I managed to like just keep an angle because I'm like, you need to stay in drift. So I just use the weight, got through, turned around the back corner, was heading back to the start line. Here I'm thinking like, how am I gonna do a run? If I get a rerun, I was chasing as well. If I get a rerun, how the heck am I even going to do this? And then before I even knew it, the rear wheel, literally just the rear wheel 
fell off. It was on all day in the wet. I used the same two tyres. Crazy event. So I didn't even have my car ready. So finally for round two, I got my car ready. I ended up coming third that one. I let drop the ball down. That sucked. But anyway, still on the podium. Then round three. Now, I thought there was four rounds, but I can only find round three, which I finally won again. So and I'm pretty sure there was four rounds. I can't find the trophy because I do remember winning three rounds and one third. So I ended up taking out the 2015. That's this puppy. So I ended up winning the championship series down in Coffs Harbour that year, 2015. Then I also did a couple Archie events. There used to be this little thing called Triple Track Challenge. Got a second place there versus Barry Clark. And then 2016. So I'm pretty sure I parked up the Laurel and then we built the Sephiro. And I can't remember if I drove the Sephiro for these rounds or not, but I think I did. I drove the Sephiro or something. I don't even know. It was crazy times. But I think I drove the Sephiro. Got a second place. A pro class uh, round one and round four don't know what happened in two and three I don't know what I was doing there who knows what and um, then randomly decided Stanthorpe had an event on and we took the Cephi up there and I pulled the second place out of that mighty rig so I had my 2530 back in that so I was back in driving normal force then really 2017 2018 2019 2020, nothing. I don't, I don't even know. I don't think I've really done any comps. I think we did start doing some DCA stuff. Um, but just enjoying driving. Obviously, we're building the AUs and stuff like that. So my main thing was, let's just have fun and help people get started. So then we move on to 2021. Finally, pull the first place at Coffs Harbour in the AU. Non-turbo. I won that round. I drove it down. So that, that one you guys would have seen last year. Um, I drove down, won that. And then I finally, which had to be this year, finished round three, Turbo AU, um, which is kind of funny because the Turbo AU has not given me a great result apart from the third place. The very same car has given me a first place non-turbo. So that is that. I know there's probably a couple more here and there that I have got, can't remember where, but I have done a lot of driving so those of you who probably think it did not know that well that's why i thought i'd share this because not many people know but i've literally been driving since i think 2009 i used to drift at parklands in my laurel so i'm going to throw some images you probably would have seen through this what cars that i had through the events and kind of the stages but i thought it'd be cool because not many people know that and that's all those years of driving and competition and stuff like that that's really where, what we, why we do the AUs the way we do them is so we can get more people in. So it's far more affordable and we can have a great time and drive. So I hope you guys kind of enjoyed that bit of dab into history. I was talking with the boys today, kind of crazy because the amount of heartbreak that's happened behind some of these as well that had to happen was crazy. So hope you guys enjoyed. Hope you guys enjoyed the Turbo AUs because uh, also, I still have no idea what to do with a stinking turbo AU. Just don't know. Bash and rev limiter and it still works. I don't understand. Sam's car is just on the hoist looking, looking hot. Also, is this what... I had Cam's building his big turbo AU. <laughs> so, um, yeah, basically, if you're in a turbo AU, this is what it really looks like. Hoist up. And then leave it there for a really long yeah, time. Yeah, see? Always something. So, hope you guys enjoyed. Catch us next week. I don't even know what to do, but we're going to um, try and jump into some crazy, crazy things. I've got some wild ideas, and I'm just... I think it's time for me just to... I've got a bunch of cars that I, we're just going to do some dumb stuff, and let's just... Just no rules. We're just going to do it. Thanks, guys. Stop moving it, Grog. We're trying to finish the video. Yeah.